You're listening to Modern Mail Radio with Jared Zavistoski, right here on LA Talk Radio. What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Jared Zavistoski, and you're listening to Modern Mail Radio. This is all the stuff your mama should have told you and the shit your daddy never knew. And joining me tonight, we've got special guests, Domina Dahlia and Parrish Dignam. We're doing a special show, guys. We had a we had a few uh, we we had a few show reschedulings and da da da, and then finally we came up with a brilliant idea to do a show on BDSM. And I have to thank you, uh, Domina, for making this making this whole thing happen and kind of bringing Parrish and this uh, like this this was kind of a match made in heaven. Uh, so I love that I got the two of you guys on the show. And Parrish, you've got a lot going on right now. You've got a lot going on. So why don't you guys introduce yourself and kind of tell us what you're doing and what you're about? You start. I'm Domina Dahlia. I am a professional dominatrix. I'm a latex model, and I'm just really fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I can top that. <laughs> um, my name is Parrish, uh, event producer, model, performer, um, actor now, uh, as of this year, um, and doing a lot of stuff in the fetish community, as well as fashion and costuming. Um, so it's good to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's crazy because you put on some of the, the craziest, coolest events in L.A. And I've been to a couple of them. And I mean, th this is this is where you go in L.A. when you want to impress somebody. And they're like, oh, let's get dirty. Let's get down. Like, what do you got going on in L.A. that's like crazy? It's like, oh, you go to you take them to a parish party. Yeah. Um, so, you, I mean, I've seen models in there like, I mean, blood and, and well, there's like even a metal grinder thing. Right. That became like the 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 thing. We try to find whatever is kind of interesting and out of, out of the ordinary so when people come they're like what's going on you know what, this so by out of the ordinary they strap a metal plate to somebody's crotch and they grind a metal grinder on it, it shoots these sparks everywhere it's kind of like the, the, it's probably the coolest stage show i've seen in a long time so uh I really and then, uh we're, we're gonna get to this but um i, I want to talk about your film later i want to talk about what's going on in your life uh you know where you're going because from i don't know when we met a few years ago uh, it was uh, an underground thing, and now it's become very mainstream, and you've, you've got a whole bunch of really awesome events. And then when we met, uh, what, what, what was that, a few years ago, it was just, this was kind of a side thing, and now you're a professional dominatrix. Yes. And uh, you're killing it, and you're teaching classes and all this stuff. Yeah. So let's explain to our, our audience tonight what BDSM is. Um, and you can, you can Google that, you can Wikipedia it, but why not take it from an expert? So tell us what BDSM is. Okay. Ladies so, first. Um, <laughs> I will go first for sure. So um, there's a lot of um, things in the in out there right now in the media and what are going on, and it's just really not true. BDSM is the relationship that you have between the dominant and the submissive. So there is a lot of really amazing things that happen between the two, and. Um, it hasn't been portrayed quite well in the media lately. So yeah, I mean, like when I think of BDSM, okay, when I thought about it, obviously I have an open mind, but uh, you know, when the the first initial thought is you're like, okay, what does that stand for? Like bondage, domination, and sadomasochism, and then that immediately you immediately start to think of like Satanism, and you're like, what does that mean? Like they they bind each other and they worship Satan, um, and it, it's it's funny because the whole fetish thing, it, it it's. Uh, you know, the rubber and the latex, I think, is what kind of is misunderstood about it. I think that the actual, well, and we'll, we'll, well I'll let you guys explain this further. Well, that's a little bit different. You know, there's fetishes, and, you know, we all, like rubberists like myself, we love latex, you know, and, like, we just love rubber. But there's people who are sadists who they love to inflict pain on another, and there's people who are masochists, and they love to take the pain which and has nothing to do with actual satanism it's, it, no. I, it's to, <laughs> too confusing and completely different things i, I googled this earlier <laughs> no it's actually like a complete amazing headspace that you can come into so um for instance you know i am actually a lifestyle dom i have a lifestyle submissive and he feeds off of me he gets therapy from me giving him my dominance so i just take okay. it over Dude, and oh yeah it's uh a power exchange between two people and yes. a lot of people get wrapped up in the whole pain element you know so if you want to get to the root of it it really is about two people exchanging power and that can happen in everyday life it could happen when you're at the supermarket and you get cut off in the aisle or whatever or you you know you're 
uh, dealing with someone you don't like and they're just trying to like over talk you and something like that. I mean, in everyday life you have power and you have submissives and you have people that are just they're dominant by nature. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't really end when you go to the bedroom. And I think yeah. that uh, a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to deal with these pressures in life, you know, whether it be a busy day at work, you know, or uh, the rules and regulations Let's of everyday you. life. <laughs> um, <laughs> you got so a great voice. Let's hear it. Right. <laughs> um, to talk about the psychology of fetishism, you know, I think it really is at the root of all of it because you can have a pair of handcuffs and you can have a whip and you can have some chains, but all those things are material items unless you give them meaning. And, exactly. you know, so you're not necessar necessarily a kinky person because you put some handcuffs on, you know, yeah. but if the person who puts it on you uh, says, I'm going to put these handcuffs on you and then I'm going to let, you know, have some power over you and you give that to me then it becomes fetishism. And I think that's that's where a lot of people get uh, lost in the, well, I'm not into pain and I'm not into getting beat and, and I really don't see why people wanna hurt each other. Mm -hmm. um, but the psychology of it is what's really, I think people have to understand more is that everybody has a little bit of fetishism in their life, you know, whether they realize it or yeah. not. And um, if you're a very controlled person and you spend a lot of time, you know, just dealing with a lot of pressure in life, you know, whether or not, you know, let's, let's face it, when you uh, stop at a red light or, you know, you slow down at a yellow light or someone says, okay, it's green, you can go, uh, you're dealing with control every day, you know, so, in, oh, on a very low end, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you have a very busy job and your boss is yelling at you every day and you have a very busy schedule and um, uh, for whatever reason you come home from this long day of work and you just can't relax, you know, and you, you're just kind of pent up, uh, the right person can come to you and say, okay, look, let me take that let me give you some control so you can release all that stress and, and, and you can do that on me because I can handle it because I'm, I'm a dominant, you know, or I'm a submissive. So uh, in most relationships you have these kind of elements, but in a fetish relationship it's a little more extreme and where you would say, okay, I've had a really hard day, you know, can you help me kind of just unwind and you need more extreme measures. And does it always have to be, uh, you know, an external forces in the world and da 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 and I need to take this out or could it, can it just be a I'm a dominant individual and I like to well, engage this way? I think that again people get wrapped up in the idea that there has to be contact and pain and all these things. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chime in right here. So yeah. there's a, a pleasure that comes with the pain. So as the mm. pain is being inflicted upon that individual they are not feeling pain, physical pain right. at all because it's in mind. It's, it's if you you wouldn't know it unless you actually experienced it. Okay. You would have no idea what's happening. You know, the pain goes away because the pleasure is there and the release is there. It's therapy. Mm. Okay. It's Very much therapy, yeah. You know, and a lot of people need that because they just can't tap into that on their own. So they need a partner, you know, in life or a dominant to come and say, okay, do you trust me? And, and you know, these persons, yeah, okay. I really do think that you're the right person that can come and kind of show me myself in a lot of ways because you're really helping them uh you know tap into things that they need you know and not everyone needs this and you know there's different forms of psychology and therapy but um i really do believe that fetishism is a psychology in itself to help people just tap into the things that they need to tap into or get away from things sometimes that they don't want to think about you know and escapism is one way of doing it drugs is another way of doing it but fetishism in a very pure and form it's a very there's a very mis there, there's there's a really bad um Stigma. Stigma on BDSM. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like this is what you think of all day long. You have a normal life. This, if people leave their everyday lives, you know, and they come home, and then every now and then this will come up. You know, the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. is, it's not just this is me being here waiting for you to get home, and then you're going to beat me. That's not what it is. <laughs> but, but that's exactly what people think, and it's not that way. You know, it's it's just the mood is right and you know it, it comes up and you just help that person and you feel it and i myself as a dominant gets the same as the submissive out of so what you're saying action. is it's not it's not all uh sexual in nature it's it's actually no. more psychological in it's, nature it's i think it'd be very psychological absolutely. the sex okay. absolutely. Uh, element and the pain element comes okay. later you know a lot of people get into fetishism not even knowing why they're in fetishism because they're like wow you know this is a great way for me to explore myself and open up and kind of just you know give trust to somebody else yeah. um and they're like wow i really like this i didn't know you know I, am i kinky am i am i crazy you know what um but there's a whole community you know anywhere in the world you can probably tap into this um but uh as you mentioned it's not about pain or even pleasure or even sex it's about uh just people that are powerful and there's people that are submissive and, and trust 
and trust, trust between he, two people. He mentioned trust. Trust is an amazing thing because how many people do you really trust like that? Yeah. And especially to go into a community of people that, you know, and that's you may that, not know that well. <laughs> that exchange between the two of you or the three or four, however many, the trust yeah. is an amazing thing that you can let go of and intake. And it's amazing. And okay. the, I mean, not all submissives are weak people either. You know, no, submissives actually are very powerful people Absolutely. because they can handle things. A lot of people might say, wow, I didn't know you can that that's a pleasure thing, you know. Um, in a lot of fetish situations, the submissive is the dominant because they're giving the dominant permission and control over them. So in a lot of ways, they're in control of the whole situation. And, y yes. and you know a lot of this. I um, I'm trying to think of a, a good an uh, analogy for you, something more mainstream. Uh, there's a movie Fight Club that you got. Yeah, oh, yeah of movie. course. Sorry. Yes, Who of hasn't course. seen Fight Club? Fight Club. <laughs> uh, exactly. in, and I'm not going to go into the whole like you know fetishism as fighting. That's um, a really good analogy. But uh, there's a scene where um, Brad Pitt, the lead character, obviously the alpha Tyler. male, is um, <coughs> sitting down with Edward Norton in a bar, and he's kind of going, over, he's trying to educate him and mentor him and tell him, you know, and Edward Norton's very lost. He's like, wow, mm -hmm. I'm lost in consumerism. I'm lost in all these elements, and you know, and then Brad Pitt's like, just stop, you know. Uh, and then it just didn't work. And then they go out in the parking lot. And then he's like, OK, look, this is probably an extreme thing. Just hit me. And, and you know, Edward Norton's like, what? That's crazy. Why would I hit you? Yeah. He's like, just hit me. You know, mm. here's a guy that probably doesn't have a lot of control in his life. He doesn't have a lot of power in his life. And, and, and here's Brad Pitt. He isn't okay. submissive. He's like, I'm a powerful person. I'll take this for you because I want you to, sh to feel power for an instance. Mm. So Edward Norton, obviously, bam, hits him. And Brad Pitt, you know, he gets a little smirk on his face. He's like, okay. And then we get back to you. Now we're getting into the switch. But um, yeah. in the very pure, I mean, this is a very, sh you know, I'm just going to go out there for a second just to kind of show you that you don't need to be a weak person or submissive to take pain because yeah. sometimes in some instances you take pain to show someone else that they are a powerful person and in a way they can get actually get off on that. Now, um, uh, yeah, maybe you can talk a little well, bit. That's, that's of, crazy. You bring it to an example uh, on fighting because now I understand it completely. And be whereas <laughs> before I didn't, but I'm like, I okay. Mean, they're, they're obviously not fighting and they don't hate each other. Every <laughs> three months or so, I just need to hit something. And it's like, I've had that in me for years and years. And I, I, I can relate to the BDSM thing because I played around with that a little bit, guys. Um, but the, uh, the fighting thing is that was probably the most therapeutic thing on earth for me was when I actually started doing Muay Thai and I started fighting and I started competing and training and people couldn't understand how I liked getting hit in the face or how I liked hitting people back or what that was. And I was like, there's something animal about this that I need. It helps me. It makes me a better person, a, a more put together person. It's a release that I needed for years. And it's crazy because even, even to this day, I, you know, I'll go a year without doing Muay Thai and I have to go back at least once a year and kind of like, you know, reestablish my roots and, and kind of feel that uh, animal thing. So what were we going to say about the switch? Were we going into switching or? Oh, you should get into BDSM. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. Um, no, so you have people who are switches, but I want to touch a little bit more on the submissive. So a submissive is a very structured person. They're an individual. They're not this weak person who just wants to be told what to do all the time and every day. So they're not a bitch made nigga. No. They <laughs> they actually, usually, most of the times, they're actually the dominant in their life, you know, their everyday life. Okay. And, and this is why they want that release. And from childhood, sometimes, they, there was things that they saw that kind of sparked an interest in them, you know, and like, hey, you know, so what I What happens like when you're that. a very powerful person yes. and everyone around you is just listening to you? because you're in control of such, like whether it be at the workplace or mm. with all your friends or the alpha. Uh, you know, if everyone's doing what you want all the time and you're controlling everything in your life, at some point you have to be like, wow, you know, I- It's fucking boring. It, so it's, it's interesting. So more, do you find more <laughs> dominant individuals, people that are actually like- Of course. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Need that receiving. Yes. Huh. Yes, most of my clientele are very powerful businessmen. Okay. And- do you mind if I ask what you do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a professional dominator. So what is that? What is that? like? If Whatever I they want. So I'm here to fulfill a fantasy for them. I am here to do what their wives and girlfriends will not do. So you smack them around a little bit? I'll do whatever they okay. want. No sex. Oh, okay. So There's, there's no sex. <laughs> I think that n n so it's, it's definitely a fantasy. Absolutely. So you come in and you basically like tie them down, handcuff them. Or Depends on what they want. Some spank of them, them, some calm of them a bit. like. <laughs> some of them, some of them like to be spanked. 
for hours. You some know? of them probably just want some conversation. Some of them want some conversation. Some of them want to hmm. be dressed up like a woman and fucked in the ass with a strap on. I mean, there's a lot of things. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dominatrix, so that stuff happens. But there's a lot of things that happen here, and it's just for their personal needs. I'm providing a service for them. I am their therapist. Okay, that's cool. And it's funny because y you actually have a master's degree in psychology. Yeah. And uh, we were – that's, that's crazy because her other friend was going to come on here, yes. and she has a master's degree in psychology, and that was one of the big selling points was I was like, yeah, let's get a psychologist on here. Let's talk about this. Yeah, and she does this stuff with me. And I think that <laughs> – I think it's becoming more mainstream now, um, but it's crazy because I think in a lot of people's minds it's like this perversion or it's this – you know, it's like this dark thing and you, somebody's got to be wrong with you to participate in it. Yeah. And it's like, you've got a master's degree. You, you, could, you could open a practice and actually uh, sit down and listen to people's problems and get hired well, by I mean, the state. Fetishism is a practice in a it way. And, it, and, and do, people do sit down and go over their problems with the dominatrix. And a lot of times, you know, and I'm also a dom as he's well. A he's a male dom, I'm a female dom. Um, so, uh -oh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're friends. There's lots of dom <laughs> going up in this motherfucker. <laughs> There's a lot of relationships where, uh, you know, it has nothing to do with sex, whether female or male. Uh, I attract uh, someone who uh, needs help, you know, in, in some form or other, you know, whether it be sexually or mentally or like this guy seems like he has a lot of energy, you know, and, and in a very purest form of energy or vibe or power or alpha, whatever you want to call it. I'm drawn to him because he seems like he has it together or he has control. I mean, yeah. it really is about control. Uh, and I need that in my life, you know, so um, whether I meet or attract a lot of submissives by nature, you know, they're like, they, they're drawn to me because they, they need control in their life. So whether I'm, I want to be a, domi a dominant person or not, my nature is attracting yes. that and I become that, you know, and, and I think a lot of men in their relationships may feel that way already or, or females even. Yes. Um, not exactly a fetish thing, but uh, power exchange is a way of life. And if you understand that there are people that need power and energy and and uh, strength and there's people that have it there's always going to be that relationship of power exchange whether it be a dominant or submissive Absolutely. or two friends or a guy and five of his buddies going out or two females two men it doesn't matter you know yeah that's like, and yeah. if we're all here to kind of help each other you kind know of exactly what he's talking yeah about. i put that in the book everything that you're doing is every conversation you have is power exchange Everything that you're doing, one party is giving, the other party is taking. It, what, however it is, you, you and people, the second people understand that, a lot, a lot of things become easier in life. Because you realize that you're always actively engaged and you have a choice as to whether, how far you want to take that. Do you want to win this or do you want to lose this? Because you not doing anything or you not acknowledging it, not being something, is you losing it. Okay. Uh, so that, uh, just in, in terms of like male empowerment and dominant, and I think that, I think that a lot of guys actually feel... A, a lot of pressure. <laughs> uh, She's right now. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's female empowerment as well. Okay, yes. I, you know, I mean, like, I have the same, you know, <clears throat> as Parrish was saying, you know, like, I am this cute girl, hee <laughs> hee, you know, like a porn star, right? I am a dominant female, yeah. and everybody listens to what I tell them to do, and everybody comes to me for advice, and everybody comes to me to make them feel better. You have such a perfect way of suggesting things and, and making it sound like a suggestion when well, it's not. Well, because I know <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> You're very, very good at what you do. I'll say that. But no, but I mean, I, I didn't want to make this into a male thing, but I mean, this is a male edification dating show, and certainly I think that more women should be empowered and should be in touch with their sexuality. And that's so important because I think a lot of women are actually repressed, and a lot of women would like to be in that in, in that headspace, but they, they, you know, society's conditioned all this stuff around them where it's like they can't. Um, and I think a lot of males are pressured to be more dominant than they truly are. To be sure. this alpha male. What is an alpha male? And it's like, uh, I was, I, sorry, I'm getting attacked by Can a I fly. Can I touch on that for a second? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to touch on that for just a second. There's a lot of males that I come to in my profession and even in just my personal life, they're just afraid to say what they want. Mm, okay. And with me, they're able to just open up and be who they are and what they want to be because I'm, you know, me. I'm taboo, you know? I'll do whatever you want. We got a caller. Hold on. <laughs> Somebody wants to ask you guys a question. Hooray. <laughs> caller, you're on the air. Hey, what's up? How are you? What's going on? Good. How you doing? What's going on, fellas? Not Hi. much. <laughs> Who's there? 
This is uh, this is Jared Zavostovsky. You're on Modern Mail Radio. Uh, did you have a question? Uh, who radio? You're on Modern Mail Radio. Did you have a question? <laughs> Are you trying to order a pizza? Uh, wrong call. <laughs> I think I got the wrong number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you can find us at. Uh, we're actually uh, live on the air right now. Uh, uh, you can ask find us. Ask him a question. At, uh, what are you doing? LATalkradio.com. <laughs> Go on LATalkradio.com, and the video section is what <laughs> is who you're talking to right now. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. LATalkradio.com. Have a good night. Well, that was. Uh, you should have asked him something. About you know, we we got a <laughs> we were talking about like power surges or something, and like the. Uh, the phone comp or the uh, the power company actually called us. Like I, I forget what it was, but no yeah, no, we've gotten shit. some weird ironic <laughs> calls at, at at weird weird times. But um, where were we? What were we talking about specifically? Nothing. It was female empowerment. No big deal. Your show is male based. Blah blah blah. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no no no. Uh, Switches. I think that you know, and it's funny because a lot of what I'm a lot of what we're we're perpetuating with the modern male movement. Um, involves females. I mean, that's the subject matter. So we're bringing girls on here. We're giving them a voice and saying, hey, guys, if you want to do this, this is how you get the girl. This is how you're going to have a better job approaching her. This Good is how idea. you're going to have better luck with her. Um, let's face it. If you want dating advice, three guys sitting in a room hypothesizing about what works for them, it's based on a whole bunch of different factors that maybe you, you're not there to see. There's perspective and there's context. But you really want to know how to get a girl? Talk to a girl. Um, and, you know, with especially with with female empowerment i think it's such an important topic um because it's it's not it's not about this pendulum shift where we've got to go okay you know all these women need to be dominant and men need to be submissive and and there's definitely like uh you know a female rights thing but we're coming back to this like middle ground where i feel like if men were taught to back up a little bit and maybe not aggress so hard and 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 hit on girls left and right like they're desperate and thirsty a lot of women would come in the middle and actually be open to communicating, to telling them what they wanted. Um, and I think that there would be a, a, a much, much better uh, dating experience. And you kind of find that in Europe, um, you know, where guys aren't as like, hey, I, I got to get your number because you're the last person on earth. And if I don't get it right now, I'm going to fucking die. And it's like, Jesus Christ. Okay, why, you, you really put too much, uh, too much into this. We got another caller. Hold on. Caller, you're on the air. Yo. I think you got the wrong number again, bud. No, I went to your website. I'm, I'm now on, now I'm calling. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? What up? You yeah, got a question for us? <laughs> Do you have a question your, for uh, Parrish or or uh, Domina? Who? Do you have a, a question for Parrish or Domina? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Um. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> We're just sitting here having a little talk. What are you doing? So, what, what, what got you into the industry? Who? You. Me? Oh shit. Yeah. That is a good question. A good question. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, I, like, twelve years ago, I met my now husband, and he was my boyfriend at the time. Do you need some help? No, no, I got it. I got it. <laughs> and he had this incredible infatuation for latex models. So he saw this magazine with this beautiful woman on the cover, and she had latex on, and it just gave him a giant boner. So then he met me, and I'm this really hot girl, and he was also into BDSM, so he would be like, hey, choke me, or hey, tie me up, or hey, do this. And I was like, oh, okay. And I would do it, and I was like, I fucking really like to do this, you know? It's so It's interesting that when, you, oh, not to cut you off, but uh, when you met him, he was asking for things, saying, hey, do asking. this, hey, do asking. that. Now, it, that doesn't make us submissive, now does it? He's, no, no, he's no, because he's very dominant. He right, is the most dominant person I've ever met in my entire life. However, he was begging for mm -hmm. this because that's what he was into. Mm -hmm. Sexually and mentally, that's what he needed to live his everyday life. And every other girl that he had came across was just like, you're crazy, you're a freak, goodbye. But I am also a crazy freak. So I was like, hello. But you were in the so closet. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I loved rough sex. I was always a freak, you know. But I had never had anyone this extreme. So that's crazy. So, it was actually your husband that well, got you into boyfriend. being your... he was my boyfriend. He was my boyfriend at yeah. the time. And then he bought me latex. So I... Do you married him? 
Dressed, <laughs> this is dressed a man head with a plan. to toe in latex, and then we started going out to these clubs, and then people were like, oh, my God, you're a beautiful model for me. Oh, my God, you're beautiful. Do this. Oh, my God, you're so awesome. How about you come and um, mentor with me? Be a dominatrix. And like next thing you know, I've mentored under so many amazing dominatrix if here If you in like LA. it, then you put, should have put some latex on it. <laughs> and here I am now, a professional dominatrix, latex model. Love my husband. We're still married, and he is my life time submissive that's awesome that's it is awesome, awesome. That's awesome but he's the whole reason why i'm this now because i don't even know if it would have come out in that same way hmm it's true <coughs> and this is a good light on uh, lifestyles lifestylers you know maybe you can express more because since you are a lifestyle we uh, are a lifestyle uh and that's a lifestyle fetishist is someone who lives the life 24 7 i don't know if that's what yes you do. absolutely uh and and that's obviously different than people that uh, might come visit uh, Dahlia and, um, you know. My clients are completely different from You know, they might just want a session, you know, mm. or like 15 minutes they want to explore something. A lifestyle fetishist is somebody who uh, chooses to have that power exchange 24-7. And uh, a lot of married couples, a lot of relationships have that, which is really great. It Interesting. Is. Yeah. Do you have any more questions, bud? So, uh Damn. Hey, well, that was a very interesting story. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> You're welcome. I appreciate you hey, calling back. I'm, call I'm calling from Philadelphia, by the way. Uh, hey, Philly. Hey, What's Philly. up, Philly? That's my hometown. <laughs> I yeah, love I'm in, Philly. I'm in, I'm, in a I'm in a halfway house. Uh -oh. oh, shit. <laughs> 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 well, I get you. I hope you get whole way. That will make me <laughs> <a little> happy. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. You will. All right, it's good talking to you. You too. All right, buddy. Thanks for calling in. Okay, bye. Whoa. I'm actually glad he asked that question. Yeah, that was a great because, question. Like, it's, it's kind of interesting how I became what I am. It's all because that's what my partner wanted. And then it's crazy because we're, we're on here, right? And there's there's so many like little zingy jokes I want to make, and there's so many little things <laughs> that I, I want to, and I'm like, but it's, the first time I think I ever walked into one of these parties and kind of saw what it was, I, I knew better. I had a I had a very very deep respect for it, and I I just I understood that that's what this mattered to these people. It matters. Everybody in the room, this mattered, and I knew better than to fuck around. And it's funny because I went to a party with a, a friend of mine, and he was like this you know total bro like idiot. And he walks up while p these people are having a spanking session, and he walks up and slaps one of the guy's ass. And this chick and this dude come out of their handcuffs so fast, and she turns around, runs, grabs a taser, and chases him out of the, <laughs> chases him out of the party. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm sitting here stunned watching this, and I'm like, what is going on here? Um, so it, it's it's almost a religion for for well, some people. Um, I'm, you know, there's a there's there's a, there's a there's a lifestyle, there's a community. So you have the BDSM community, and then you have what's called vanilla, and it's nothing personal. It's just that you all out there who don't really know what's going on inside the community, you're called vanilla. So, like, we'll be at a club. Um, Got some prejudice, some, some rivalries going here. We'll be at clubs, and, you know, my husband, he is a very dominant man. He's really built. You've seen him. Yeah. He's like Superman, and he's extremely strong and a very mean person. However, he dresses like a female. He wears latex, heels, 100%. It's, it's actually kind of strange, you know? Okay. But... We'll go to clubs, and guys will get the wrong idea and smack his ass. And it's not a big deal, you know, whatever, he smacked my ass, whatever. The guy will run around, and then he'll come back, and then he'll smack his ass again. And there's not a big deal, then come back, and he'll smack my ass. And he smacked my ass so hard, and I kind of went flying forward, and I was like, huh, did you see that? You know, this guy just totally smacked my ass. And then my husband's like, no, I didn't see that. And then, you know, the guy came back. And then he smacked my husband's ass so hard that my husband kind of moved a little. And he was like, oh, hell no. And he found the guy, and he grabbed him, and he choked him down to the ground, and he kind of put him in his place. And that's where... That works. Uh, <laughs> the security came in. They stopped the whole thing. They kicked the ass smacker out. But it's a misconception that everyone thinks they can just touch everybody because we're exchanging you know mm. yeah, yeah i think that is why so many fetishists tend to kind of resort to having their own uh spaces you know not so close the dungeons stick to or what have you because it's safe you know because yes. a lot of people don't understand the, the boundaries that are in place yeah, in yeah. exchange situation now it's a very vulnerable situation to be tied up in a public space. I mean, think about it. Absolutely. You know, you're like, well, you can't stop someone from doing things. And in most club environments where there's alcohol and other things, 
and I throw events, so I have fetish, yeah, yeah, yeah. fetish areas at my events, and it took a long time to kind of perfect it to to where we can have those boundaries in place with people that are vanilla watching, yeah. and they're like, wow, I want to watch this. I might not want to participate, but this is really interesting to see this. It's kind of you know provocative. I'm getting turned on. I'm, you know, where's my girlfriend? I hope she doesn't see me. You know, <laughs> and, and or I hope have, she does see. You know, or she <laughs> hope, yeah, and then we have a lot of couples that come and say, hey, look, you know, they raise their hand. They're like, I want to try, you know. Uh, can we come in there and can you know can you do that to me and so it's a safe environment for them to kind of like well, that's explore. why i do it you know because i think uh and my clubs may be more of like vanilla fetish because obviously yes. there are and i needed that to be that way because hardcore fetish or more serious fetish situations i don't think i respectively could put that in an environment where i couldn't fully protect them you know yeah. and, and as a fetishist yeah. myself i don't think i want to be responsible for that so i have professional doms come out to my club we more of a uh, educational thing and I set up you know some furniture and things where they people come in and when I say furniture obviously it's not a couch it's it's something of a device where yeah, we yeah. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, I think that you know my events are a gateway to the fetish industry or I fetish agree. world I mean you need that because a lot of people are, they're like I'm not going to go to that club where it's, you know, strict dress code and latex. I don't own latex. Yeah, I, you actually, know, you, so you do need I'm, that. I'm feeding the scene. Uh, it may, you know, one person at a time, maybe I'm educating them a little bit. You know, maybe they get like, spanked and they're like, they go home chuckling. They're like, you know, that was so crazy. It's we like a spank. topless bar you as know, opposed know. to a full strip club. Well, you know, and, and, and my, and my hope is that they do go home and they're like, you know, that's what, what happened to us, you know, and I want to explore, yeah. go on the website, whenever, and then they find you know, Dahlia or, you know, down the road. But, you know, I really do uh, think it's exciting to be able to introduce fetish to people and just everyday people. Yeah, yeah. Walk in off the street or, or, your, or your buddy that came <laughs> out to the club, you know, where he's like, you know, I don't know what no, was going on. It's for sure. But what what I, he's doing is absolutely amazing because the thing is, is there's so many people out there who just want to know, how can I get into this? And mm -hmm. if you're just a single male and you, you have a little bit of a fetish, you know, kinky side to you and you try to get in, you're just going to be thought of as pervert and no one's going to let you in, you know, you're just going to be shunned. But someone like Parrish who's opening events and you can come in and like meet other people who like it and who are into the same thing and it's a gateway to get into the it's a very um you know it's hard to get into the scene yeah. and so when you actually get into the scene and then you're in there then everybody's absolutely amazing and it's like a family yeah but I mean you have to want it and you have to desire to be in there and then you have to play by the rules and and respect it for what it is you know and and it's 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 interesting to see that because it, it's something that you know I don't think it takes a lot to pick up on. I don't think it takes a lot of perceptive energy to pick up that th this is important to these people and that there's something going on here that's a little bit, because I mean, I, I've been to your events and I've been to a few of yours, at, but I mean, I've never, I never participated at your events, because uh, this, was, this was years ago. Um, but it's, it's crazy because I, I picked up on something that I didn't feel anywhere else. This wasn't a bunch of people recklessly running around no. fucking each other. No. It was <laughs> it wasn't an orgy. It was something else no, and it was not different a entirely. Event. It's not an orgy. It's a family. It's um it's a community. Yeah, and it's 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 just interesting to to, to know There's that that's out there. there. And so and there are, there are delinea delineations between uh there're like genres of this, yeah? Um, because we just mentioned it, there's like so there's like a latex fetish community, and then there's a hardcore BDS BDSM. Well, before we get into specifics, and not to cut you off, yeah, um, yeah. a fetish can be anything. 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 anything you, want. you know, okay. it could be something that turns you on, or or just makes you feel like kind of excited. You know, and it could be the the texture of latex, or wearing it, or feeling it on someone else. It could be cross dressing. Um, where someone who is not exactly a homosexual, but he's a straight male, yeah. but for some reason, yeah. I don't know why I like wearing yeah. female's clothing. And there's every there's a point mm -hmm. in every guy's life where he's like, you know, there's something weird that I like that I might not want to be able to tell my wife. She might divorce me. Or <laughs> tell, I don't want to tell this girl that I'm in love with that I just met, you know, because yeah. I scare her away, you know, and that's just the reason why you, you do what you do. Um, but I would challenge anyone to say, if there's something about your sexuality that you maybe may think that it's not you that have an everyday place with any partner you can meet, that's a fetish. You know, it's something unique to you that you like that kind of falls outside the normal, mm. I guess, everyday conception of sex. You know, and you're a fetishist. You know, right away. I mean, whether it be a pair of handcuffs. You know, at the very minute level, is this uh, control giving control to someone? Um, 
you know, you're at the, you're just kind of like embarking upon something that could go a lot deeper if you really kind of think about it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are afraid to, you know, that's why we have these events and um, you, you do what you, you do, uh, is that I think everybody has from, you know, whether they're in bed having sex and they get their hair pulled and they're like, wow, you know, pull my I hair like again. That. Yeah. You know, <laughs> back my ass. Choke, Choke me. me. I you know, like uh, that. You know, what's funny is that's actually in the book. I teach me. I, I, I put a little thing in there because I don't know what it is, but 90 percent of the women that I've met like to be choked. They like to be spanked. And I grew up uh, with, in a domestic, uh, you know, uh, a domestic abusive household, domestically abusive household. So I grew up with a very, very angry father, you know, who beat the crap out of my mom and blah, blah, blah. Um, so when it came from came time for me to date, I was so afraid of that. And I was so afraid of being overly dominant. And then more and more women wanted that. And the first time I was asked to choke a girl, I was like, <laughs> she's like, no, no, don't do it like that. No, like, don't kill me. I'm like, well, wait, what do you mean? Choke you. What the fuck do you mean? And she's like, no, do it like this. And I'm like, like that? She's like, no, oh, it's still too much. I'm like, okay, what about like that? She's like, well, don't be a pussy about it. Just fucking choke me. I'm like, all right. So, you know, and I put diagrams in there on kind of like how to do it properly. And there's, there's definitely a disclaimer about what, you know, if you don't understand it, then really, really there's don't take it There's a fine line between abusive and dumb or BDSM. So mm -hmm. there's a fine line. So you have people who are taking pleasure and actually giving to the other person. And then you have someone who's using that as a abusive relationship, you know? So like okay. you can have a man who's abusing a woman Mm -hmm. And it's not a power exchange. It's not a mutual consent. It's a selfish you know, kind of thing. Yeah. It's a selfish thing. And then you have a different exchange where it's the submissive wants it from a man. You know, the, she, she wants this from him and mm -hmm. he's giving it to her, but he's not getting pleasure out of hurting her. She's not even feeling pain from what he's doing from her. She's getting pleasure from it. There's a difference. And there, there, I had those definitions written down. I forget. There's actually a technical term for people. Um, who get off on hurting other people are people that sadist, masochist. Yeah, yeah. So there's sadism. Sexual sa yeah. sadism as someone who gets off on inflicting pain on another person sexually, and masochist is someone who gets off sexually on feeling pain from another person. Okay. That's another. another yeah, subject. and those are actually in the DSM as actual mental illnesses. Not that I really trust the DSM. Uh, all that much. I well, mean, it's collective information from a thousand different psychologists. You know, I, mean, it's not I, I mean, I really, I beg to differ about that because, you know, I deal with those type of people every single day of my life and I wouldn't say they have a mental yeah. disability at all. I, well, I really don't think that at all. I think that some of them just like the release. Some of them like it. When it comes to mental illness, I think that we like to categorize things and I, I don't think that it's fair because there, there, I, it, there are mental uh, differentiations. But I don't. I wouldn't call. I don't like calling it a mental illness. I don't like. I don't like labeling or categorizing anything. I think everybody has little parts and pieces of everything else. And you know, I was. Uh, I was diagnosed with bipolar. Uh, I was diagnosed with ultradian rapid cycling bipolar at the age of six, and I was one of the first kids in America to get to get bipolar. Um, so when I got it, they didn't know how to treat it or whatever. And it was the identification of bipolar that allowed me to go, okay, this is what this animal is. Now I can figure it out and I can beat it. Um, and then once I beat it, I learned how to use it in, in different ways. Um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of good to have a, a capacity for overdrive. Or let's oh, say if there was sure. uh, if you had a different kind of mental illness, there are ways to use it as a strength. Um, and I, you've, I don't like calling it a mental it illness. Used it as a strength. I am so proud of you. <laughs> I really am. Um, but uh, thank you. Sorry. Thank you. I didn't mean you to just make you blush. <laughs> you made me blush. <laughs> No, you know, but I'm very proud of you, though. Yeah. I, I think that when you label things, you give people a tendency to go, oh, well, I'm like this, and then and then they give up. and uh, Or they think yeah. that they're fucked up, and they just stop. Or they allow somebody to medicate them, and it's like, maybe you don't need medication. Maybe you just need to get spanked a little bit, you know? Well, <laughs> in, in the industry uh, that I work in, I noticed that people that in my fetish area don't do drugs, don't drink. No. They're very, they get off, their high yeah. is off the power exchange again and just the the sexual connection and and it's, it's a thrill ride you know it's thrill. and it's very true that i think a lot of fetishists um use that as their energy and their source oh, you know it's great. most of the people that we roll with they don't do a, a single mm -hmm. thing you know and i i really agree with the whole therapy type of thing you know that i was saying earlier you know it's it's absolutely therapeutic for people who need this they just need it they want it 
and it's what you do for them. And I, myself, I don't get off on doing this. I get on like inflicting pain. I get off on the fact that I am actually providing a service to them and helping them mentally. Okay. Uh, so what do you guys think about Freud uh, in, in this whole thing? Do you think that the, because you guys crave this, there was some developmental thing that... Uh, I mean, everyone wants to st- uh, blame someone for some yeah. weird thing in their life, you know? And, mm-hmm. and, you know, okay, I was abused child, so maybe that's why I like to be a, a masochist or a sadist. Um, but it doesn't matter what happened to you when you were younger. I think There's it's so what you do with it. There's so many people that didn't have anything that happened to them yeah. when they were younger. They just want something when they're We were older. talking about that uh, with the porn industry. We had Capri Cavani on here and uh, Kelly Holland, Penthouse. And we were talking about that, and I made a mistake. I was like, oh, you know, it doesn't have to do with something that was, you know, fucked up in your life. And yeah. she's like, no. She's like, I'm completely normal. I'm from yeah. Canada. <laughs> and I was like, exactly. oh. The happiest Oops. people on earth, right? Yeah, no. And I mean, <laughs> you, you couldn't imagine it. Uh, Canadian yeah. is the definition of well-centered. Just centered people. <laughs> They're really, fucking awesome. I agree 100%. So um, I want to get to uh, your film real quick, Parrish. Um, you just, you, you're, do you, it's been wrapped. You just did it. What's we just finished it. Uh, okay. You know, it's, it's brand new. Uh, you know, it probably won't, uh, probably won't premiere until later this year. But okay. uh, it was exciting because, uh, you know, I'm not much of an actor. I got your fly now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I sick to money. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'm a performer by nature, you know, stage performer. So yeah. when I got onto the set, it was, it was definitely a lo- learning curve there. But uh, it was a great ride. And we, you know, several weeks of filming and, um, uh, it's called Pale Horse. and Looks um, great. Uh, yeah, we have a little trailer out on the, uh, my Facebook. You can check it out. Um, I have a big painting of a pale horse, I like, do. over my couch. Yeah, and it's, like, this <laughs> totally gothic, awesome thing. I bought the giant, like, copper horse or whatever you have. Yeah, that was it. That's yeah, yeah, same yeah. thing you're talking about? Same thing. I think that's not yeah. a painting. It's a giant horse. What? What? Oh no, that was the bull. The, oh, the, the bull. Yeah, the giant, the giant copper bull. No, I got rid of it. Oh, I love that. It's it's you massive. I had I had me. no connection to bulls. Damn it. I I got it I for an ex girlfriend, and then she broke up with me, and I was like, <laughs> I oh know. well. Your house full of just wild animals and and, oh, his and house skulls. Is amazing. He's very good at decorating. Gothic or his stuff. Girlfriend was. I you know what I I picked up some tips from her. <laughs> she was the one that introduced me to Z Gallery, and then from there I ran with it. Did you kill it? Yeah. Fuck yeah, girl. <laughs> leave it leave it to Dahlia to kill it. Um, cool. Well, I'm, I'm excited to see the film. It Me looks too. great. Yeah, it was great. Uh, directed by Perry Taro, uh, Taro uh, uh, Merrimax Productions. Um, so it's oh, wow, okay. Uh, you know, it won't be the first and hopefully not my last film that I'm working no, on. No, no, no. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, no, dude. It looked awesome. That's what I, That was another thing that caught my eye. Uh, I think I saw you coming up on my Facebook news feed, and I was like, what? This is awesome. You know, you look completely demonic in it. It's it's, <laughs> it's <rad. laughs> yeah. Um And uh, Dahlia, is there anything that you wanted to add? Is there? I mean, it, I as actually do have a couple things. I do have a movie coming out called Rubber Dolls. It's not out yet. It's been in the making for a long time. Sorry, and um, it'll be out really soon. It's called Rubber Dolls. It's a really cool latex dominatrix film. So it's a made by females for females. Oh, yeah, okay. really hot. And then we are actually um, just kind of breaking ground on a educational BDSM film. So it's going to be really amazing. I am filming the sizzle for it on the 20th of this month and look forward to it. It's going to be really amazing. It's going to teach everybody what they need to know uh, about BDSM lifestyle and what the movie and book tells you is not right, not real. So Great, so we'll call it like 50 Shades of Not Gray. (laughs) <laughs> we can't actually say the name of it, but we'll say a very popular book in the movie. But um, you'll see it. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, that's that's huge. Like, I mean, Fifty Shades of Grey is so popular, and everybody okay. thinks that it's this, you know. It, it's a very, very easy way for people to get a wrong idea about some stuff. Very or wrong. a right idea. I mean, it seems like uh, he, in the movie, it seems like he was a, um, what is it, uh, a sadomasochist or a sexual masochist. Um, yeah. Where he, he got off on hurting people. It wasn't that he, he liked... Was, Definitely the a power sadist, exchange. absolutely. Um, but it was more um, glamorized as an abusive relationship, not a BDSM lifestyle relationship. I got I the didn't fly. Get the fly. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it's it. just little itty bitty gnat. It's just like me. <laughs> um, um, I think I there's more than one. You might have killed the I first just want one. I people but. to be a, like very more open-minded about the lifestyle and like just 
you know, if that intrigued you, look into what we're doing. And well, you know what? Uh, for our viewers at home, I want to do something to open your minds a little bit. Why don't you stand up and turn around real quick? Um, because you look fantastic in this. Uh, she came walking in here and almost gave Sam a heart attack. <laughs> so uh, you could probably step a little bit over that way. There you go. I don't want the, uh, the mic to look like it's uh, doing anything inappropriate to you. But yeah, just take a couple spins. And uh, this is great. So You'll love that. I, I think that it's, <laughs> it's great that she could walk in here into a radio station like this. And I think well, that... How could I not walk in here to your radio station like this? Well, you certainly made me uh, <laughs> turn bright red and act like a little boy. Uh, I'm, yeah, taking it back. Okay, sit, sit, sit. Get back in your chair. Um, but, <laughs> you know, it's crazy because there's, there's so much judgment and, and there's so many, um, you know, wrong ideas about certain things. And I think that everybody, you know, you need to have an open mind and just explore things. Like I remember when I first got invited to a dominatrix party or dom party, I was like, there's no fucking way. And, but I, I, at the time I was like, all right, well, you only that, live was once. That where we met? Our yeah. Party? Yeah. Yeah. So this is really fucking cool. Cause this is where we met. And, yeah. Um, it was pretty hardcore. What he walked into was probably the most elite invite only exclusive party that he got invited to and it was really cool because I looked over um, and I was like who are you and it was Jared yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh you're making you me know, blush so like, bad well, I'm probably turning bright true, red though it was just because you know I mean it was like kind of strange to see Jared in there but he was there and he fit in and he had an amazing time and he was very open-minded and we had a really good connection since and we've been friends for like yeah I know you walked up and you're like oh my god who are you I just, I want to lust after you. And I was like, I was like, okay, cool. And then you're like, oh, let me introduce you to my husband. And I was like, uh. He was very nervous. Cause I've never been in that environment, <laughs> but it's crazy. Cause it, had I not explored that, I would have never met you. And you know, you've been yeah. uh, an amazing supporter of what we're doing here with the modern male movement. And it's, it's, it's such a shame that people define their entire lives by the genre or what they're into. And they have no ability to spread themselves out and go, hey, that person does that, or there's this interesting thing over here. I'm going to allow myself to trans uh, transfer. What it was it? Tran transgress. Well, you know, Tran you're, transgress. you're not absolutely necessarily into what I'm into. However, you're okay with it. You're open-minded, and you. I think it's fascinating. You don't look away. And very you know? entertaining. And yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's great. That's why I love you so much. But see, that's another thing. Is it's not a tolerance. I'm not tolerating other people's existence. And I think that this is a really, really important thing that guys need to learn. It's just because you don't understand it doesn't make it wrong. And there are thousands of people out there that have a thousand different things that they like. And, and trying to understand that can be one of the most amazing experiences of your life. You end up meeting awesome people. You end up having these experiences. You, yeah. you end up getting to observe things that had you been closed-minded, you never would have gotten to see. You never exactly. would have gotten to experience. And that's like, probably the biggest underlying theme throughout the book, throughout the message, like that's what I want to get across to guys is just be awesome, treat people like they're human beings and really explore the world. You know, you don't have to be this way because you know, when you were a kid, you watched this movie, you started dressing like this. Now you feel like this. Now you're caught. Now, uh, you know, you have to be in this click to, uh, to, to be, to be,